that brings us to uh, what we feel is is the solution for digital publishers. Um, what we're uh, our goal here is, and what we have now with Anvil is to produce literally one dashboard that you log into, and you can manage all these things with. Um, WordPress drives over 25% of global internet traffic today. It is by far the dominant platform. Um, right. And it's it's so flexible, and it actually allows us to do what we want to do. I mean, WordPress is the real hero here. Um, we should we Anvil's built on the WordPress platform. That is correct. So that's why we're we run WordPress as the foundation, and then we've basically built the publishing platform uh, to run on WordPress. It's um, funny, Pete. I went I went back and you know I researched about WordPress, and your name was synonymous with WordPress to me <laughs> because. You know, we've worked in this before, and actually, I was on my Apple TV the other day, and we were just like on YouTube looking up some different things. And I don't know if you remember my wife Teresa, but yeah, she did a did a lot of the groundwork, you know. And she's like, "Well, we've already done this." I mean, she remembered that from yeah. how many years ago? It's yeah. been you know probably six years or more. Yeah. So yeah. yeah. Well, and WordPress has come a long way. So they. They, WordPress has APIs now, which didn't have a year ago, really, uh, for us to uh, do some of these magical things that you can do now. So the the you know the platform itself, WordPress has evolved. And um, so, what exactly is an API? I hear this acronym a lot, but I guess I just don't understand. Um, it's the a, like it, a layman's definition. Yeah, it's a it's a it's a two way pipe between two platforms. So essentially. When you publish, in, let's talk about apps for a second. When you publish um, a, a new article or a blog post or an issue in an app, in real time, it sends all that data to the apps through APIs, the, the API pipes. The apps get updated automatically. Um, okay. That's, that's what an API does. It can also work uh, backwards. Somebody subscribes in the app, pays you money uh, to iTunes um, or Google Play. And then uh, the app communicates back to your WordPress, your Anvil installation, and says, hey, here's a new subscriber. Add the subscriber information to the table and let them have access on the web. So there's, this is, this is uh, I think, amazing stuff. You know, you can, that you can actually do now, which you think should have, you know, we should have been able to do this 10 years ago, but you just couldn't. Right. So let's... Um, so meter paywall. Um, um, so we have a meter paywall system that runs on Anvil. Um, I don't know how familiar you are with the meter paywall, but essentially it lets the reader um, have a few free articles before they get prompted to subscribe. And the meter. And these are these are not articles you've chosen. It it is it's based on right. what the reader wants to see. So right. Um, you, you as publisher set the number of free articles that you'll allow out into the world and let's say it's two the reader comes to the first article that they found through Google and that one's free and then they read another one because you have a compelling image up for the next article and they go to that that's free when they get to the third then they're asked to subscribe to read more um, so it's not like a old hard paywall system where the Publisher chooses what to tease out. This is this is driven by the reader reader's interest, and it's different for every visitor to the site. So, when we talk about that expectation of free, they're not being disappointed. They're getting what they came for, and then as they travel down their journey of discovery um, and learn that your content is valuable, then they're asked to support it. I see. So I'm not just putting out two or three articles that I want, the actual visitor can choose right. if they are searching for a particular, I don't know, you know, uh, teaching my dog to pick up a dumbbell. You know, they can yeah, that's right. find excellent. Okay. Yeah. So you're and that's you know, it's it's more hands off for you because you don't have to pick articles and, and, and guess what your audience wants. And it um, is better service for the 
new readers. You know, they come to your to your website and they find what they want, and they're pleasantly surprised instead of disappointed by a immediate pitch for money. Okay. One article. So, in, with a metered paywall, Google will index. They'll crawl through your entire site. They'll index every single article you publish. If you have a thousand articles published, then Google will have indexed a thousand of your articles. And so those articles will show up in search. So when I search, let's say <clears throat> dog picking up a, a dumbbell is a, becomes viral and gets passed around in Facebook, shows up, that article shows up uh, dogs and dumbbells as the number one search. And you get a million, <clears throat> uh, million visitors to your site. Um, guess what? With the meter paywall, all, <clears throat> all, <clears throat> all million of those visitors, excuse me, will be able to read that article. But when an individual browser starts to read the next article and the third article, then that individual gets prompted to subscribe. And that's okay. so it's it's giving the individual what they want through social and search, and then giving them a limited number of tastes on the site. Okay. And it, by the way, in the apps too, the apps work exactly the same way. You can view, uh, uh, let's say, three free apps or two two free articles, and then on the third article, you have to subscribe in in the app. And so, does the subscriber know how many they get? Oh, is... that's a great question. That is a great question. Well, it's really that's really up to you. You can promote that or not. Um, okay. The New York Times. Um, was really the inspiration for this. They have um, succeeded with a metered paywall in a big way. They now have over a million digital subscribers and still growing. Um, you know, they, uh, when you get to, uh, now they're a news publisher, so they publish a lot of content. So they give you 10 free articles per three weeks or something like that. Okay. At article number five, uh, they, they, they prompt you saying, hey, you have five articles left before you need to subscribe. And then at article 10, you have to subscribe. But they're a news publisher, they're a big news publisher. The Boston Globe recently um, <clears throat> did some testing and um, uh, actually removed the article uh, countdown notifier. So what, what they found is that when they started telling people how many articles they had left to read, that actually annoyed them. Um, okay. Now, they're also a news publisher and publish a lot of news, and, and that was their finding. So uh, as a smaller publisher where you're not publishing, you know, thousands and thousands of articles each year, um, I right. recommend not to annoy your reader. Pick a number you think is fair and just make it clear on the, on the site that, hey, you know, get full access or subscribe. You make that call. You know, what we do is we... We make that call out visible, so um, people know it's a subscription-based site, and off you go. Okay. I think, it, I think it all comes down to managing your readers' expectations. If you if you hit them up for the subscribe pitch right when they're wanting more, because you haven't let them know how many more they can read, then they're likely more um, well, they're more likely to subscribe at that point. But if you flash on the screen on their first article, you have three free articles. Then the you know the thought, at least to me, would be, well, I can read three and then I'm going to go away. You know. Okay. Uh, yeah. But if yeah. they get to the third one and and they say, oh, to keep traveling down this path, I want to go down. I need to pay X dollars um, per month. Then they're more likely to dig in their pocket yeah. because you're you're. Um, um, well, that's anyway what the research says, and I, I tend to agree with it for my own personal yeah. behavior. It's like, it's like building rapport. I read one article, that was nice. I read a second article, oh, this is pretty good. And I read the third article, you know, now, you know, so each article you're kind of building that relationship with your reader, your new reader, and you're not annoying them. And if they see that it, they have to pay now, and they say, hmm, okay, I get it, this is great stuff, I have to pay, then they can decide, do I pay or not. Okay. Yeah. Okay, so that's the metered paywall. Let's let's, let's keep trucking here. Um, so web issues. Um, so with uh, Anvil, we uh, essentially uh, let you build web issues similar to the way a news blog is constructed. They're they're web based, but they're organized properly. So you can you can run separate issues. Um, 
create an article, assign it to an issue. And if you wanted to, you could have a news blog uh, running parallel to your issues for in-between news. And it, this varies depending on the publisher greatly, but um, uh, some publishers say, okay, I will curate um, other blogs and other sites uh, information into the news blog just quick you know here's a great article I found on uh, dogs and uh, hamsters and or whatever and then you know here, here's the link to the article whereas the issue then uh, becomes the, the the paywall side of the equation uh, so there so are lots of ways to handle it but essentially you get the ability to produce instead of PDFs or flipbooks live web articles and I'll show you in a second what they look like so is a isn't an I'm gonna use like the term an article is that not published as a blog or uh, is it published like as a, a different kind of post of some kind yeah in WordPress speak it's called a post type so there's the default post type is called post and that's where the news blog lives um, we okay. created another. We create a second post type called article, and um, what you do in, when you click on the article post type is you go to issues and you can either create an issue um, and view your issues, and then you create a new article and you check a box that simply assigns the article to the issue. Okay. Okay. Yeah. So it's a difference of organization primarily, yeah. in terms of a blog post is a running stream of things that's organized by publication date and time. The articles, okay. articles are published to the site in sets, um, at, you know, as they are in issues. That's the primary difference. The secondary difference is, is we can, because we've created, we've separated posts out now from articles in, in the system, we can style posts one way and articles another way. So if we have a themed issue, for example, like the Christmas issue or the, the, um, you know the event issue or what have you we can then assign um, different styles on the website to the different post types okay yeah okay um, the, and but and also the web issues uh, as well as the news blog are also uh, connected through these APIs to the app so when you publish an issue on on the site the, the app is automatically updated you don't have to do a thing Okay, that's good. <laughs> okay, that, and that, that one button, that one button thing, I'm chasing. <laughs> exactly. That's right. <laughs> exactly. And so, you know, as as discussed, it the news blog, um, you can run as a separate uh, stream of news, and the issues a, a second uh, stream of your actual issues, and it's very okay. flexible. Um, we even have. Um, news publishers that um, will publish articles and then they'll migrate their news blog articles into say a special issue like a best of you know 2016 or whatever issue yeah. okay uh, and email so let's not forget email list building um, one mm -hmm. of the things that we set up is uh, the ability to capture any email address whether it's a paid subscriber or free um, add it to a, a, a list and then uh, set up a schedule so any new content that is added to the site whether it's blog or issues gets automatically emailed to that list so you know when you publish an, a new article or a new issue um, that the email is going to get sent and you don't have to do a thing and you can pre-format right. that e email to say whatever you like. Um, right. Exactly. Yeah. And promote whatever you like as well. All right. Okay. And social posts. Some publishers automate social posts. Some publishers don't. Uh, but you can. We can certainly set it up to, you know, when an when an uh, article goes live or an issue goes live, to notify uh, the social uh, world, Facebook. Twitter. So Peter, let no, me it's... ask you this, because this is a concern I have that, you know, if I have five different people come into my website and they read five different articles and they like them or whatever we do, but they post them to Facebook, mm -hmm. aren't I just giving all that information away? 
you're only giving whatever you set the meter to for an individual. So this is very much individual based. So I as an individual come in, let's say I get two free articles. I read my two free articles. I like, oh, I like that one. So I'm gonna share it. Well now, imagine they have a thousand friends, which is not unusual, or 500 friends in Facebook. Exactly. Imagine, yeah. imagine a percentage of those friends see that article and say, you know, I'm, 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 I'm a dog lover too, and this, this is great. Now you're going to have, for the price of that article, you're going to have maybe 10, 20, I don't know how many people going to that article. And, and then those different people might like and share that article. So you get this viral uh, promotion you can't get anyway, a, a, anyway else. And right. just keep in mind that the, each individual, a million individuals come to the site. Each individual can only browse two free articles, and then they get prompted to subscribe. And a percentage of those will decide, hey, this is good, or they'll come back later and subscribe. Um, so so that, when, they, when they are sharing an article, they're not really sharing the whole article. They are. Somebody no. know. Well, no, they're sh well, hopefully they're sharing a link to the website. Right. That's, they, that makes sense. Right. Thank you for right. clarifying that. Yes. Right. Okay. Yeah. All so right. in Facebook, you get the link to the actual article. So you're you're essentially uh, our metered paywall is essentially allowing people to share your articles in social and and sharing means getting that link in Facebook to drive the the right. new readers to your site. Gotcha. Right. Okay. So yeah. We should clarify the automatic social posts that go out share a link to your website on Facebook. So what goes out will be a headline and an image and some uh, um, excerpt copy that when people click it, they don't get the whole article on Facebook. They get a link back to your website where yeah. the, the uh, paywall is in effect and the, um, you know, the, the funnel of moving people towards subscription is, is in play. Got it. Okay. Now that makes sense.